Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Meet the Commissioner series here on ACHAHockey.org. My name is Lou Gamlin, and tonight we are pleased and we have the privilege of being joined by the Commissioner of the Women's Division II, Taylor Hadley. Taylor, thanks for joining us tonight. How are you? Hi, Lou. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, hey, it's a pleasure. Well, the season is, uh, it, it's never an ending season, as we know with uh, the commissioners. You guys are going uh, 12 months out of the year, but before we get into that, what we'd like to do is tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would. Um, play, playing experience, coaching experience before uh, becoming commissioner, uh, anywhere from high school to whatever that has led you to where you're at today as the commissioner of the D2 women's side. Yeah, um, so I actually came on the ACHA staff in 2017 is when I formally um, joined as commissioner for the division. Um, I think that my trajectory for joining the ACHA probably kicked off in 2014 um, when I was actually still a student. I was a senior in college. Um, a friend and I had spent the previous three years trying to get a women's team off the ground at Loyola University, Maryland. Um, so we were finally successful. Um, we did not play in a league that was part of the ACHA at that point. So this was still kind of early for some of those teams in our region to really be part of the ACHA. Um, but in doing so, it sort of sent me on this was in the right place at the right time trajectory. And I got connected with some people at the ACHA. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of great networking to be had. And uh, I was invited to apply for the role that opened up. Um, I guess before all of that, before college, I played uh, high school hockey in New Hampshire originally from Massachusetts, so hockey uh, runs in my blood, and uh, yeah, it was really, when I got to college, on the women's side of things, there really weren't a lot of people pushing me to apply to colleges to play hockey, so I sort of had resigned that I was hanging up my skates after high school, uh, which looking back is really sort of disappointing, um, and then I ended up at a college that didn't have, you know, ice hockey, and so that is, you know, kind of going back to 2014, we finally were able to get a team off the ground at our particular college, uh, and then fast forward, I think that's really why I'm so invested in, you know, being part of the ACHA, working with all these teams, trying to build more opportunities and awareness for those players that might have been in my shoes. Now they have more opportunities. Uh, so that's kind of the, the path that I've been on and stuck with. Well, you know, it's been an exciting time in the ACHA, just even in the short time that you've been involved. With the like with the national tournament, for example, um, all coming together in the same location. We were all in Dallas yeah. last year, and next year um, going or uh, well, we'll say last year, 2019. Next year going to Boston. It's going to be a lot of fun. In your eyes, how has the ACHA grown just in the few years that you've been involved? Yeah, I mean, even looking back, I like to you know think about when I was a player. If I we had even joined the ACHA. There would have been less than, I think, 45 women's teams total in the ACHA um, back in 2014. When I think back five years uh, before I even joined the ACHA, there were, I think, 25 D2 teams um, in the ACHA. So talking about the division that I'm involved with. In 2015, there were 25 teams. Flash forward to 2017 when I joined, we had about 42 teams. And since I've come on board, this season, pandemic Aside, we would have expected to have 60 women's D2 teams uh, register. So in a five-year period, we've doubled the number of teams in women's D2, which is so exciting. Um, and I think that this growth is only going to continue. And I'm so excited. I was really disappointed um, that, you know, the national situation got all changed around this year. So when I first kind of got connected with the ACHA, it was actually the first year in Columbus when they did all five divisions in the same region. Um, so I was able to come out to the tournament um, as a commissioner of the um, conference that I'm involved with outside of the ACHA. We had a team representing the conference. I came out. It was really exciting. Um, the next year was my first season as commissioner, so ran the tournament in Columbus. Obviously, we had new turf in Dallas last year. Um, and then going forward to Marlboro, having all divisions under the same roof. I think that the men's teams take this for granted, but for the women's teams, the connection to some of that just sort of hyperactivity that goes on with some of the higher end, um, you know, men's games is something that we miss out on often when the, the games are all separated so much so under different roofs um, and different atmospheres. So really, really looking forward to the opportunity for this jamboree style for those women's teams to have some overlap and exposure uh, among the men's teams that will be playing uh, in the next ring. 
No, that had to have been one of the hardest things, I'll bet, for you back uh, in March when it was just everything was a go. March 1st, we were all plan making our plans, looking at regionals, watching regional play, and then boom, it, 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 it just like everything else. How difficult was that for you to, you know, talk with the coaches and some of the players and, uh, you know, to just, you know, just to, to, to relay that? And, and how do you grow from that if possible? Yeah, I mean, my heart broke for the players, for the coaches. I'm, you know, I'm on the younger end of the staff of the ACHA side mm -hmm. of things. So I do feel a bit more of a personal connection to the current players, I think. Um, so just remembering what it was like to be a senior on a college campus, um, you know, sports aside, it's devastating to kind of have that all changed and turned around on you. I can't imagine. Um, so having to reach out to those teams and let them know, I'm so sorry, but we're not doing this. It's, it's over. It's done. It was so heartbreaking. I can't even imagine on the receiving end how heartbreaking that was. But I think teams understood. Obviously, we're in completely uncharted territory. This is a pandemic that's going on. Um, what I don't think there was anything else we could have done. Uh, you know, a couple weeks out after the news broke, we're not doing this. Other major sports organizations started to do the same thing. Obviously, we kind of followed the trend of the NCAA early on. Um, but at that point, there was nothing else we could have done. It was the right decision. Um, so I think going from here, all we can do is hope to have the best experience for the student athletes that we possibly can. Um, you know, if the pandemic continues on this trajectory, I don't know what the right answer is. Nobody at the ACHA does. That's why we're making contingency plan A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. Um, there's just so many things that could happen. So I think it comes down to just really focusing on the health and safety of the players, but also acknowledging this is a super important experience for a lot of these student athletes and how can we maintain some of that normalcy and maintain that experience that they've all come to expect. Well, getting back to something good, we'll quit talking about the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> it's our 30th year coming up with the ACHA, and one of the things that I've noticed I've been involved with the ACHA about six years on the broadcasting end of it, and I've noticed it's growing, is the women's side. And you know, when I first started, you know, we covered a, I do play-by-play -play for Aquinas, and I've seen some of the teams. Like you said, there weren't as many teams. And it's grown. And what, what have you done? Tell, give us a couple examples of how you've been able to get it, the, the growth of it, the amount of teams and everything, because it has really taken off, and that's – that's a kudos to you and your effort. I mean, I would love to take credit. I think that it's just such a group effort. There are so many people who are passionate about growing the women's game um, on all levels, right? There is just this grassroots effort happening for women's hockey right now, which is so fun to be a part of. And I think that from all levels, there are people at the youth level who recognize, hey, these girls need something to work towards. And there are people on our end on the college side saying, yes, we're building things for them to come to, come to us. Um, so it's this back and forth. And I really think that over the past few years, there has really been a domino effect. I think once one college starts a women's program, they, the girls that go to the college down the street say, hey, we could do that. And then they'd have an opponent. And so once there's this knowledge, you know, all these girls go from high school, they go to different colleges, maybe they go somewhere that doesn't have a team. If, you know, if a team disperses to five, six different colleges, those girls could all start their own team. So I think it's really been this domino effect where successful programs have popped up. Um, you know, girls see that and then they go to their own colleges and they're able to start something new. So it's like I said, it's there's so many people on a grassroots level um, trying to make this happen for female players. Um, and the growth has just been tremendous. I think that another unique thing about women's D2 is truly the student leaders. Um, in the other four divisions of the ACHA, you really find a lot more um, hands-on coaches, dedicated staff, um, kind of those adult figures, I guess. Um, and at the women's D2 level, it is truly, uh, and not to say not any of the other divisions have this, but a lot more of our division is made up of those student club presidents. It's a club on campus. The school expects those players to serve in that leadership role, um, and take the ownership over the team. So it's a lot of student athletes that I'm interacting with, which is really unique. Um, and I think it's those players that really are helping to take that grassroots level 
um, to the kind of in the next phases. So it's been really exciting. The growth is there. It's going to continue. Um, and honestly, it's, it's the players, it's the coaches, it's the youth coaches, it's the parents. Um, it's a new generation coming up, and I think that there's a lot of potential there. Do you get a chance to get out during the year to watch any of the games? Or what uh... – I know it uh, once September 1st hits, you know, Labor Day weekend or whatever, that's usually when the ACHA season, on ice anyways, kicks mm -hmm. into high gear. Do you get a chance to get out and watch or, or do you watch video or uh, just to see the, the girls in action? Yeah, I, I'm lucky. I wear quite a few hats these days. Um, so part of my getting connected with the ACHA was my role. Um, I also serve as commissioner of the Women's DVCHC. So we have a grouping of teams that are um, also members of the ACHA. But, you know, as, as you know, at the conference level, you know, we put out playoff tournaments. We do other things for our, our member teams um, as they kind of work towards that greater goal of achieving nationals through the ACHA rankings. And so being involved with those other teams on kind of that more um, localized level has given me a lot of opportunity to see those games. You know, we put out a playoff tournament every year, which is really fun. Um, and then I also am an assistant coach at the Loyola, Maryland team. When I graduated, they weren't quite able to get rid of me. Still <laughs> lived in the area, and I couldn't get off the ice. So uh, it is really a pleasure to, you know, I have my level four coaching certification these days. Uh, it's been really fun to kind of be part of this this program uh, throughout the years and see the girls really take ownership of it um, and be a coach, uh, be a commissioner, really get to kind of have my hand in all facets of what's going on in this division. And, uh, yeah, so I do get to watch some hockey. There's some local uh, girls' high school kind of growing in the Maryland area where I'm based, and uh, it's really fun to get to see some of that before and after the college games at the rink. Um, and, of course, you know, I try to skate in an occasional adult league game down here myself. So lots of hockey all the time, all summer long. Um, but, yeah, looking forward to maybe a quiet fall. I think that it's going to be a really interesting change of pace. Mm -hmm. It's such a – disappointment for the players and I'm going to miss being on the bench so much but from the kind of the admin back end side of things I think it's going to give us a lot of time to really evaluate you know what are our goals for the next season how can we continue to find ways to support the ACHA teams how can we help them um, succeed at recruiting how can we help get the awareness level increased for the high school players so they know where they can go after they graduate um, so even though there might not be a lot of hockey going on this fall, there's going to be a lot of, I think, Zoom calls, all those passionate people I talked about um, getting together and seeing, okay, come, once we get skates back on the ice, uh, what's the game plan and how can we go from here? Well, you kind of answered the next question I was going to ask you, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What is your, give me your main goal for 2020 slash 2021 for women's D2 leading up to obviously culminating with going to Boston for the Nationals, but a goal or two that really you want to accomplish this year as the commissioner at the D2 level for the women? That's such an interesting question because the way the ACHJ is structured, obviously we have the commissioners, we have the hockey ops, we have the executive director, there's the board. Um, there's a lot of people kind of driving the whole ACHJ mission, um, and I think everyone has their own division on their mind, uh, ACHJ on the mind. I think for a women's D2 Something that we're really looking to achieve is honestly um, kind of taking programs to that next level. So I talked about a lot of players being that team representative, they're the point of contact, um, really helping find ways for them to grow their program. So a lot of them find themselves just stuck in this cycle season over season. Someone graduates, they're passing the baton to someone else who then has to like take the half of the season to figure out what's going on. Um, and these, these are really smart student athletes. They're really, really dedicated. But I think how can we as an organization build a foundation that's really easy for them to succeed um, so that we don't have a lot of turnover? You know, a team might not have enough players one season uh, after being, you know, in a contender for nationals. So this turnover that happens, how can we um, address that turnover? How can we support the student leaders? Um, and really just find ways to kind of make everyone as successful as possible. Last question for you, Taylor. Now, I know you said you can't, you like to get out and maybe get in the adult leagues and play a little adult hockey. If you don't want the skates on, you just want to take a break from the world of hockey, what does Taylor Hadley like to do in her spare time when there's uh, no hockey involved? 
That is a good question. Um, I really love to go hiking. So maybe, you know, instead of the skates, it might be a pair of hiking shoes. Um, that might be a good option. There's a lot of really good restaurants uh, where I am in the Baltimore area. So definitely you might find me um, finding out some different appetizers and maybe a drink by the waterfront. Um, but yeah, I would say if it's not ice, still very active, love to go hiking and to travel. Unfortunately, a lot of travel has been taken off the calendar these days, um, but definitely exploring uh, what nature has to offer. Well, Taylor, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule for joining us here on the program, and good luck to you. Keep it going. Uh, the Women's D2 has really expanded. It's grown in leaps and bounds, and you've done a fantastic job. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, can't wait to talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks, Lou.